Do depressed people need to sleep more? That's what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and this channel is about mental health education and self-improvement. If you don't want to miss an episode, click subscribe and the notification bell. Today's topic is based on a viewer question from Judith, and she says, Hi, Dr. Marks. How much extra rest does someone with depression need to get better compared to someone who's completely healthy? Is any extra rest actually needed to get better? If so, how do we know how much is too much and vice versa? Thanks for your question, Judith. In actuality, people who are depressed do not need extra rest. Depression can make you feel more tired and sleepy, giving you the feeling that you need more sleep because you're not well. But sleeping 10 hours or more is actually considered hypersomnia or too much sleep. And it doesn't help you get any better. It's actually a symptom of your depression. In fact, sleep deprivation is a treatment for depression and it's called wake therapy. We've known for decades that if you keep a depressed person awake for 24 hours, their symptoms resolve. But the problem is the, the improvement doesn't last very long. It may last a day or two, or the symptoms can return as soon as you get sleep. So the next level of research looked at how to get the improvement to last. And here's what they came up with. Researchers found that you can prolong the antidepressant effect of sleep deprivation to last weeks or even months by combining the staying awake part with bright light therapy. Why does this happen? Your circadian rhythm is responsible for controlling certain body processes like your body temperature, your sleep-wake cycle, your hormone secretion, and even your neurotransmitter secretion. The neurotransmitter serotonin affects your emotional state. The suprachiasmatic nucleus is what controls this rhythm, and you can think of it as the pacemaker of your body clock. This nucleus also has high concentrations of serotonin and melatonin receptors. So when your rhythm is off, not only does it affect your sleep, but it also affects your body systems, including your neurotransmitter secretion. So wake therapy, which is a form of chronotherapy, we call it, serves to reset your body clock, similar to doing a hard reboot on your computer when it starts acting up. Here's how wake therapy works. And this is based on a protocol used in a 2014 study by Benedetti and colleagues. And I'll have a guide for you to download on how to do this. Wake therapy is administered in one week blocks and you have alternating periods of staying awake for 36 hours at a time. So for example, let's say Monday is day one. On Monday morning at 7 a.m., you use bright light therapy for 30 minutes. Then you'll stay awake all day and all night. On Tuesday, you use bright light therapy at 3 a.m. in the morning for another 30 minutes. This will give you some energy to stay awake for the rest of the day and then you'll remain awake all day Tuesday until 7 p.m. You start preparing for bed between 7 and 8 p.m. Set your alarm so that you don't sleep past 7 a.m. on Wednesday, and that's one complete cycle. You'll complete this cycle two more times. Then on the seventh day, you wake up at your desired time, but it should be in the morning and not in the afternoon, and you go to bed at your desired time. For the second week, you continue to use the bright light therapy in the mornings within 30 minutes of waking up. Did you get all that? No worries. See the link in the description to download the guide on how to do this. How can you stay up? You start by doing things that keep you active, like walking about, talking to people, if you know people up this time of night, or even cooking a meal. You can take wake promoting agents like caffeine or provigil, which requires a prescription. If you're on antidepressant medication, you would continue your medication. If you start to drift or feel draggy, try splashing cold water on your face and hands for a refresher. The peak time for you to get sleepy is between 3 and 4 a.m. And that's why it's you the protocol suggests that you do the light therapy at this time but you can also plan to be actively engaged at something between 3 and 4 a.m that wouldn't be the time to plan to watch a movie or read a book 
this therapy has been used for both unipolar and bipolar depression. Although with bipolar depression, the studies used lithium therapy along with the sleep deprivation and the light therapy. But if at any time uh, during the therapy you start showing signs of mania, like racing thoughts, impulsivity, or irritability, you should stop the therapy and call your doctor. The early manic symptoms may resolve as soon as you stop doing the therapy, or you may need um, to get an adjustment on your mood stabilizer to get the mania to settle down. Although there's been quite a bit of research on chronotherapy and depression, and bipolar disorder, it's still not widely used. As you can see, it takes a lot of effort and discipline, and it probably works best for someone with mild to moderate symptoms. The person who's severely depressed and barely able to get out of bed may not be able to carry this out without a lot of help. Also, sometimes when people get depressed um, and they sleep 10 to 12 hours a day and they feel extremely tired when they're awake. And some people can even feel like their limbs are heavy. If this is you, I would imagine this kind of therapy would be a huge undertaking. But it's still a good treatment, but there are some practical barriers that you have to get past to make this work. Another obstacle is the need to allow for 30 minutes in front of the light in the mornings. That would be in that second week. If you tend to get up in just enough time to get to work, this will take some adjusting um, to factor in an extra 30 minutes to sit idle in front of a light. So that's wake therapy. I have um, links to some light boxes in the description. Share this video with someone who you think could benefit. And leave me a comment too. I like hearing from you. See you next time.